This is Niso. It's one of the six irregular moons of Neptune and was discovered in 2002 by Matthew Holman, Breck Labman and their team using the aptly named Very Large Telescope, an array of four separate telescopic units based in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. Like the other moons of Neptune, Niso is named after an aquatic deity from Greek mythology, where Niso, along with six of the moons of Neptune, is named after one of the Nereids, a collection of 50 daughters of the Greek ocean gods Nereus and Doris. Niso is the outermost moon of Neptune, orbiting the ice giant at an average distance of 50 million kilometers. That's more than a third of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. This means that Niso can claim the title, furthest orbiting moon in the solar system. Now earlier I said Niso's average distance is 50 million kilometers. This is because Niso doesn't orbit in a perfect circle, but instead orbits in an oval shape. An orbital parameter called eccentricity describes how overly an orbit is, where the closer the value is to zero, the more circular an orbit is. For some context, the near circular orbit of the Moon around the Earth has an eccentricity of 0.05, whereas the eccentricity of Niso's orbit is currently calculated at 0.42, making it quite overly. Side note, since you're already thinking about it, the moon with the overliest orbit is fellow Neptunian moon Nereid, whose orbit has a mad eccentricity of 0.75. Because of Niso's oval-shaped path around Neptune, there is a nearest and furthest point in the orbit, and at the maximum, Niso is a massive 71 million kilometers from Neptune. To highlight just how big that separation is, you could fit the distance between Mercury and the Sun within that gap. Although Niso's mammoth orbit is quite remarkable, it's proven to be problematic for some astronomers, as this little moon is so far from Neptune, it actually starts to get pulled out of its orbit by the gravity of the Sun. This makes it much harder to find Niso, and in the future when we try to observe the moon again, it may well have strayed from its known orbital path. This is known as the lead of Kozai effect, where the orbit of a two-body system, in this case Niso and Neptune, is affected by a distant third body, i.e. the Sun. Even though the Sun is 4.5 billion kilometers away from Neptune, and 90 times further away than Niso is, its colossal mass, and therefore gravity, still has an effect from so far away. In a 2011 paper, The Orbits of Neptune's Outer Satellites, astronomers calculated how Niso's orbit will change due to the lead of Kozai effect. Over the next 6,000 years, the angle of Niso's orbit will oscillate by about 30 degrees, but the eccentricity will vary massively, shrinking as low as 0.14 and increasing to the super overly 0.88. At this huge eccentricity, Niso will have a maximum distance of 95 million kilometers from Neptune. That's 20% bigger than the distance between the Earth and Mars. Now it's worth pointing out, all these predictions and calculations are based on the current observed orbital parameters of Niso, which have also changed slightly each time the Moon was searched for and measured. In a 2012 paper, Irregular Satellites of the Outer Planets, the authors even go as far as to label Niso in danger of being lost, meaning when we go to look for the Moon in future surveys, it may not be where we expect. This is a little alarming, but it's also worth pointing out that since its discovery, Niso has yet to complete a single orbit around Neptune, as it takes nearly 27 years to circle the planet. Therefore, all the above calculations are based on an incomplete orbit, and it won't be until June 2029 that Niso will have completed exactly one lap around Neptune since being discovered back in 2002. Here's hoping that when we next check on Niso, it's exactly where we expect it to be.